Flying a hot air balloon is a party. You float and you have no idea where you're going to end up. <laughs> we start off by launching a helium balloon, very scientific, um, to see the direction where it goes because that's where we're going to go. I can tell the direction of the wind change. Okay. So I won't let go until I tell you, all right? You're Ready? Gonna, you're going to... Oh, come on! Oh, yeah. See, I knew you! <laughs> Balloon flying is very safe. I've been doing it for over 25 years. It's something that if you haven't tried and you wanted to, you really should. We set up the balloon, we take it out of the trailer, lay it out, hook it up to the basket, fill it up with air. We, we put the heat until it offsets the weight of the balloon, which stands up, and then we have to add additional heat to offset the people that we're carrying. We drift wherever the wind takes us. There is no horizontal control. We have vertical control. A balloon, you have to go nowhere. You really don't care where you're going to go. It's just a flying party, as I mentioned before. It's just so unbelievably free. You're out there and there's nothing between you and the whole world. You see everything, uh, wildlife, the weather, the, 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 the people on the ground, the homes, they talk to you. I got something for you! Oh. <laughs> and it's just phenomenal. Uh, we can go up to two, three, five, ten thousand feet. Normally about 2,000 is where we go. And then we come down to the treetops, pick leaves off the trees. Or if it's warm out, dunk into the river and get your feet wet. We fly in a direction of which way the wind goes. Different days will have different directions depending on the wind at different altitudes. Sometimes it's only one way and that's the only way you go. Other times you can determine uh, and actually steer the balloon by knowing at different altitudes where you can go in and get a wind change. Flying a balloon is all determined on the wind. You're landing, if it's a nice calm night, you land very beautifully standing up. But if it's not, and it's a little windy like sometimes there are, you might lay, lay down. And um, it gets interesting to try to get untangled to get out of the balloon afterwards. <laughs> sometimes it's uh, unbelievable. Uh, we've had instances where um, we couldn't get out until the crew came and got us. <laughs> <laughs> I started flying in 1960. I took aircraft lessons and became a pilot. And a friend of mine owned a balloon and took me for a ride. We landed at a party. Um, my wife picked us up from that party at 3 o'clock in the morning. Supposedly we had steak and lobster, but I don't remember. We had a great time. And I said, this is the kind of flight I like. So I uh, purchased a balloon and learned how to fly. Well, I've flown everything from ultralight airplanes and balloons up through small jets. If you ask me which one I'd rather do, I'd rather fly a balloon. Yes, there's some physical work. You have to pick things up. There's some labor involved. You're absolutely right about the track, Dick. <laughs> For a person in his later 60s, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but I'm in pretty good shape. There's, what better than to be up there just with, just just floating with the air, going wherever God wants you to go and landing wherever you want. <laughs>